All right. Welcome to another episode of Comic Book Squares. We got another great one today. My name's Shane. I'm Carrie. I'm Ben. And I'm Mike. Let's get this show started. All right, welcome to another review episode. Um, this one is for Exciting Comics. Um, this is kind of an interesting one. It's um, There's actually three different kind of origin stories to kick this off. Um, we've got Blackjack, Crimson Scorpion, and Madame Mask. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll go first. Um, we, we kind of chatted about this actually before we got on that I, I think I may be the one who enjoyed this the most out of the three of us. Um, I mean, in my opinion, it, it has kind of a, it's very traditional, you know, comic booky style. Um, the artwork is, you know, traditional in the sense that it'd be something that you'd see in uh, one of the big three. Um, you know, I, the stories are really short because there's only uh, there's, you know, you got a short amount of time to really build up the character. Um, and I don't know. I, I, they, they all end on a, on a cliffhanger to get you to, to be interested to, to read the next episode. Um, you know, I think as with anything, when you're when you're going to do three different pieces, uh, some of them are going to be probably stronger than other ones. Um, I thought the the first one, the blackjack, was probably the strongest. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed it overall. Um, yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> can I can I jump in? Can I jump in real quick, Shane? Yeah. So you know what? It's funny that you said that because. Um, Again, when you think of a of a normal comic book, right, twenty some pages, and like mm -hmm. like Shane's referring to, you know, when you're trying to tell, uh, introduce three characters, because this was issue one, you're trying to introduce three characters, and so now you've cut down to what like seven or eight pages, mm -hmm. maybe that you have to try to uh, bring the the in, like engage the reader. But exactly what Shane you just mentioned, I I also felt that the blackjack character was kind of the strongest. Mm -hmm. uh lead in of the three and, and the re i guess the reason why i say that is um uh you know you don't know all of the details yet but the you know they did a great job of kind of giving a little bit of ba enough backstory to where you could pick up very quickly you know oh this, these are the good guys these are the bad guys and then mm -hmm. uh like the costume and the coloring and and all of that was was really really well done like every like it wasn't confusing in any way shape or form and then uh, Black Jack's um, ability uh, that I thought was very unique and, and kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so sorry, I just wanted to jump in because it's funny mm -hmm. that I was, we hadn't talked about that, but I find it kind of intriguing that you felt that the first one was the strongest and I kind of felt the, the same way. Mm -hmm. Not that the other ones were, were terrible. Uh, it was just kind of good, better, best, right? Where mm -hmm. you just, for whatever reason, in those few amount of pages put you kind of put put it together in a little nicer package i guess yeah um, yeah what'd you think carrie um i thought each character was interesting what i didn't see and this isn't negative i think it's just the design of the comic with with what you just said mike of it only being a few pages to flesh out the origin story not even the origin story just mm -hmm. uh intro to who these characters are it i the the thing that was missing for me was where they tie together at all it was very mm -hmm. much like here's a person here's a hero or here's a character here's a character here's a character and i didn't see the crossover and so i imagine that would flesh itself out in following um episodes but this single the single one was it was a it was just kind of like jumping around for me um mm. but oddly enough i feel the same way as you guys do about the blackjack character i was like oh this this character resonates with me for some mm -hmm. reason um and i i think it's because in my world i definitely look for where i can connect to things where it's like oh this looks like this or this seems like this story mm -hmm. and there's an entire I think four person crew in the flash mm -hmm. um, from DC comics that all have to do with cards. And so I think it was easy for me to be like, Oh, like that makes sense because of mm -hmm. all of those characters that they exist um, with somewhat similar powers. Um, mm -hmm. But I really get like, 
it felt a little daredevilish, you know, mm-hmm. like, and it's, there's, there's this underground crowd or crew that's going mm-hmm. around and making people pay for things. Um, news wise, it's just interesting given the Gambino story, the mm-hmm. Gambino family just got caught with more of mm-hmm. that shakedown kind of stuff. So it was a good comic as far as, um, probably where they're going with it. I just wasn't hooked Mm. just, just at the, with those first few stories. Yeah. I mean, definitely it's like, like Mike had mentioned, I think it's harder to do when you've only got a few pages, as far as the, the interconnection, the the sense that I got from reading it is that this is an introduction to these three different characters that will eventually, I would assume have their own comics. Um, Mm. So this wasn't an idea that they would all merge together and be, Come a team or anything like that. Um, I get the sense that this, they're like building this world, and these are three characters that exist within it. Um, is that a common? May- is that a common thread? I I just haven't witnessed that before. Where it's I like, don't... oh, here's a character, here's a character, here's a character. They have nothing to do with each other other than right. they exist in the same. I don't know. I I, I think I've seen this uh, this done before. I think that the the way that this. Um, this is by Antarctic Press. Um, and once again, we, we were able to watch these on uh, Global Comics, who's a, a great partner of the show. Um, I, I've seen this done for more indie type books in the sense that you've got a really short time to grab somebody's attention. Um, and because it's indie and um, they're, they're going to give you all three of these characters in once and hopefully one of them will resonate with you. And then when you see it on the shelf, maybe you'll pick up blackjack if that was the one that resonated with you. I think that's the mentality. I'm assuming so that that's what they're going for. Fair enough. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if there's ever, and in some cases, like we've talked to uh, artists that kind of truly don't know um, if they're going to try to bring those worlds together. I think to Shane's point, I think it's done from time to time for, for world building, um, of different stories. And sometimes it's just, I think, a uh, testing of the waters where, Hey, if we put these characters out there, let's do a, you know, a limited run four issues, six issues of these different characters and see what kind of feedback, what kind of acceptance we have of the characters. And then the strongest one, you know, is, is the one they may go with, or if all of them, you know, uh, seem to resonate with the, with the audience, then, you know, they can do side stories with different ones. I think it's almost like sometimes a testing of the waters to see, Mm -hmm. oh, we got a lot of feedback about this character. Let's, you know, let's push, let's focus on this one for now. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I I don't know. Sometimes I think artists as they create, they don't truly know that themselves, I think at times, because, you know, you just want to introduce it and, and just kind of see how it goes, see how it plays out. I mean, um, yeah, so I I'm not sure if I kind of think I'm leaning a little bit more towards Shane's theory and that it probably might be different different stories and they may never uh, cross paths or world jump or you know cross yeah. streams or whatever you whatever analogy you want to use. But um, but yeah, I think I think this book was solid. You never I think... cross the streams. Never I cross know. the streams. <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh, yeah, I. Uh, I think that overall, like there was some mobsters in there. So it was kind of mm-hmm. a, your true uh, kind of crime type of stuff. And um, how uh, Scorpion got his powers is kind of similar to, you know, maybe being bitten like Spider-Man. Like, mm-hmm. so there are some kind of non-unique pieces, which sometimes is hard to do, especially with limited space. But mm-hmm. Again, I did. I think that's why Blackjack was just, it was a power that I had never seen before. And I'm like, Ooh, that's really like, to me, that, that brought out quite a bit of uh, imagination just to kind of figure that out. We don't granted know that person's how they got their powers and things like that. But to me, that was, that was a very, very original concept, uh, which, which I think I liked. Um, not yeah, again, the, not it, th- the other ones were bad, but. In, in a lot of ways, it actually kind of reminded me a little bit of um, Black Widow's, um, mm. you know, her gauntlets a little bit because they're oh. kind of like, like a little tasery. It, it felt like I don't know the oh, way that yeah, it was yeah. shown in there that <laughs> in felt, spades. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that well, because there's actually two <laughs> yeah. different, right? Because there's like the the um, 
electrical kind of pushback almost. And then there's the spade ones that came flying out. Um, right. So the, it wasn't a hundred percent defined um, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, yeah. And it, you know, from the standpoint of where these worlds are, I mean, you, the, like you said, uh, Carrie, this one, uh, the blackjack one is much more like a daredevil kind of street level, you know, mobsters and stuff. The um, crimson scorpion one is more military. They're in the middle of the desert. It's, scorpion um, King. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I definitely got a scorpion King vibe. Yeah. And then the yeah. Madame mask one um, almost it, it well, I'm not going to give it away, but it, it almost there's a bit of a time travel element to it. And mm. so, um, yeah, I don't know what to make of that one. The, the cliffhanger in that one was a little more of a head scratcher than, um, oh, I can't wait to see what comes next. It's more of like, wait, what? Right. Um, but yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm excited as far as, you know, like I said, the artwork to me, I, I really did enjoy. I thought that it was uh, really well done and it's three different um, art teams on each piece. Um, and I thought each one uh, stood on, stood on their own. They also, you know, kind of felt like they fit together in, in whatever world that um, Antarctic is trying to build here. So, I mean, from my standpoint, I would say if, you know, you're looking for something different and you kind of get three books in one, um, it mm -hmm. might be worth checking out, especially, um, that's kind of where I, where I land with it. Yeah. To, yeah they're great little point. short stories, you know? Yeah. 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 To your point, Shane, I think, uh, you know, well, well constructed. A lot of times we, I think when we review books, we, uh, if there's something that seems really, if one of the components seems really off where we've talked about where it distracts mm -hmm. from the story or, or your, you know, the artwork distracts. So I didn't, I didn't see any of that. Like mm -hmm. uh, the story, the story again, when some of the pages, there was definitely a little bit of head scratching or a lot of head scratching from me as well, as far mm -hmm. as depending on not knowing the full story, which again, it's very hard to do in one issue anyway, but to complicate things now, we've got three separate stories in, in one issue. So you've got less time. So, so I think that's going to be natural uh, for that type of layout where you're going to have some head, stra head scratching. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I can d say of all three stories that there wasn't anything that was like super distracting to me. Again, the, the artwork was was solid, the coloring, you know, the lettering, everything seemed very uh, aligned to, to tell the story. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think that any of them did a bad job in any specific things that I that I could notice. So I think it was a well put together uh, package. So. Any wrap Do you want up, me Gary? to say more? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that I think we covered it pretty well. No, it was good. it was. Um, I think it's just I am uh, maybe at fault as uh, the kind of reader that I am, where I am trying to be like, okay, well, if you put them all in the same mm. comic, that there must be some underlying thread of similarity mm -hmm. so that's what i was looking for and that might be my fault going into no. uh like looking at my own biases going into reading a book what i'm mm -hmm. naturally looking for that i don't even know that i'm looking for um and so i'm sure if i went back and read them as a standalone comic it would be a di like each character's intro on its own it would be different rather than I'm reading them back to back and trying to make that connection. Gotcha. I, yeah. I do well, see the value in it though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I'm actually looking at um, the second page here. Um, there's a kind of a, a full page written letter from Ben Dunn, the editor and publisher. And he does mention in here that um, uh, the way that they're trying to do it instead of unleashing a flood of titles, I'll just read it exactly. Uh, but by building a universe, one character, uh, one brick at a time mm. to get you involved in caring about these characters. So that, yeah, it looks like that is probably what they were trying to accomplish here. And yeah, I mean, to your point, uh, maybe they just needed to make that a little bit more clear to the audience. Um, you know, uh, this is maybe uh, is something of the, even the, the sense of, you know, this is universe one, this is universe two or whatever that um, they're not, all part of the same world but or you could be not like me and not read that page and, and just uh, <laughs> so yeah i saw it i i went past it i actually went past it a couple times i think i went through the comic kind of twice and i'm like i didn't take the time to read it so shame on me for that uh because uh i mean i kind of assumed that's what they were doing but uh, he just 
tells you point blank that's what they're doing so yeah shame <laughs> on me for that sorry i mean i did read it but i skimmed it i like read the first sentence and of, and of the paragraphs in the last sentence to be like am i gonna miss anything right. and obviously i missed something pretty major. Well, I, know, I have <laughs> note note to self to be a reviewer maybe stop and actually review the book how about that maybe i should be doing a better job at that i apologize ben, so. ben dunn's gonna be watching this review <laughs> on youtube and say jesus guys come on I know, out a right little bit here. Here. I wrote what it else? come on what else do i gotta do here exactly we're sorry we're sorry ben we're sorry Put it we're acting inside like cupboards. late night we're yeah, acting like late night talk show hosts we're like we yeah we're bringing we, them on i know great, yeah great we get book. it we get it short of putting it on the cover you put it in the yeah. best place you could have i just kind of was i was too anxious to get to the stories so I'll, that's right I'll, we were too excited yes. ben that's what it was that's what it was I, exactly exactly yeah. yep we would have yep. just slowed right. down yeah right all, in. all right <laughs> Well, uh, I, I mean, thanks everybody for, for tuning in for this uh, review episode. We appreciate you uh, taking the time. Um, please hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell so we can keep bringing you reviews like this. And we'll see you on the next one.